everybody this is dr karma bryant welcome back to my youtube channel and those of you that are instagram watching the clip please join me on dr karma bryant overcoming narcissist abuse so you can see the full video those of you that are new subscribers thank you so much for joining me today i wanted to talk about you'll never be perfect you'll never be perfect to a narcissist and so i wanted to take you back in time um with the uh narcissistic parents uh and their children and so with a narcissistic parent, you know, first of all, no one is there. You know, I did the, the video yesterday on the idealization phase when they idealize you in the love bombing stage or even when a newborn is born, they're perfect. You know, you're perfect, a perfect individual, perfect, you know, and then eventually you begin to have your own personality as a baby. And then you you're not so dependent excuse me, on that narcissistic parent anymore, you're no longer perfect because you don't, they're not your superstar anymore. Or in, in a relationship, you begin to be human. You know, all of a sudden you have human qualities and you make mistakes and you're no longer perfect to them. Well, to a narcissist, uh, and if we go back in time and we look at the children of narcissistic parents, um, everything remember a child is an extension of them and so they almost well they do live vicariously through their kids and so if you're an athlete you know they live through you as an athlete if you're a cheerleader a model or, or you're into pageantry they live through you so everything there is no uh, middle line for example if the, if the student is a, a straight A student it makes the parent look good so I can brag about it if the if the if the child graduates with a, a, a doctor of surgery surgeon or whatever it's because it makes now that the boasting is not how good my baby did my baby is doing this but it's because of people giving the accolades to the parent as if the child didn't do the work you know so it should go back she did she or he did do an awesome job and this it, it's all you know me 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 and look at me i'm the parent that helped them make through now let's say that you have a child that's in school has straight a's or a b's you know and and the grade dropped instead of thinking like wow you know my child's character or, or my child's habit has always been A's and B's. And, you know, I wonder if there's some struggle. Are you having some problems? You know, healthy would be, you know, are you having any problems in this topic? Did anything happen? You know, is something going on? Were you stressed? You know, talk to me. You know, is there a breakup? Or, you know, something has happened to the narcissistic parent. It is, you're making me look bad. You know, you need to go bring your grades up. You know, not, hey, let's see if the grade has dropped or if you've gotten a C in any of the classes. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if we can get you tutoring. Let's see if I can help you. Maybe sit down and help you understand you know to the to the narcissist even if they go get tutoring or something like that it's all because the child is making them look bad as a parent you know uh, or let's say those pageant moms you know they live vicariously through their daughters stop eating so much you're getting fat uh, you know people are looking at you you have to be perfect you have to so it's almost like the let not almost like but the the love is contingent on performance so the love is contingent, it's not uh, unconditional, meaning that it doesn't matter, you're not perfect, you're never gonna be perfect, or, you know, hey, a, a father and a son, or a father and a daughter, and they're into sports, you know, you do the best that you can, and they put in time to, or like Serena, is, is Serena and her sister, where their father actually went on the court and practiced and helping them uh, become good at, you know, the, the good at uh, um, tennis, you know, he went out there and trained with those girls, you know, and, and his his work paid off but you don't see him living vicariously through his daughter where he's trying to get all the attention you know with a narcissistic parent the attention is focused on them I'm gonna get you I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna and it's always about what they've done and how they did it and it doesn't even focus on the hard work of the child you know and so but this child is not growing up assuming that you know in order to be loved and appreciate it it's all about performance and so unless I you know in the dating stages now that child is 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 in the thought pattern some of you are in the thought pattern that you know I'm just never good enough everything with the parent is always you I have to you have to earn my love by your performance by your looks by what you do by your academic standing by your sports you you have to be perfect you have to do this you know you, your your forehead is too big your your nose is too wide maybe we need to have surgery you're you're too short maybe you need to what do we need to do get you some orthopedic shoes or kids stop growing at a certain age but you know but here you are with these things in your mind where I just never could live up to my parents expectation you know uh, when I was in the military I had a supervisor and I used to think he was just oh my gosh you keep moving the goalpost you know he would have these certain standards for me and and every time I reached the standard I was like ah I finally you know I did this and and he would always move the the goalpost so he would always move the standards and I'm like 
you always move the goalposts and I can never meet them. Whenever I meet the standards, you move it up higher. And what he said was, he said that it's not the fact that I'm moving it because you can't achieve it. Because I know you can achieve it because I know what's in you. I know your potential. I know what you can do. I don't want you to get comfortable being just normal. He said, because you are, uh, what's the word he used? You are, um, uh, I'll think of the word, but... I move it because once you reach the goal, I don't want you to get comfortable at that level. I want you to reach your full potentials. I'm never going to move it where I think that you can't achieve it. I'm always going to move it to make you strive to be the best that you can because I see your potential. I see where you can go and I want you to continue to, 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 to and I don't want you to be arrogant. I don't want you to be, uh, uh, how do you say it? I don't want you to be arrogant. I don't want you to be stuck up. I don't want you to be unapproachable. I want you to be the best and I move up the standards so that you'll continue striving to be the best. There's a difference. So once I understood that, there's a difference between a parent just moving it just to be moving it to see you struggle. So every time you feel, you know, the child feels or you as an adult with your parents felt like, you know, every time I achieve it, a goal, look, mom, look, dad, you know, look, I got my master's degree. Oh, well, that's okay because... Hold on a minute, you guys. Okay, sorry about that. But every time, every time um, you 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 reach a goal, or every time that child, look, mom, I got a master's degree. Look, mom, I got this. Or look, dad, you know, I did this. Oh, that's you need to strive. That's not good enough. You need to because you and there's a difference between really knowing your child's potential or a person's potential and moving them in stages and helping them to understand it's not because I don't think you can. There's a difference. You see the conversation in the beginning and then the conversation with the narcissistic parents. They move it because they can. They move it because they feel empowered to do it and they, they don't mind seeing your heart broken. They don't mind seeing you, you know, because they're better than you. And anytime they feel like that you're, uh, that you're superseding them or getting beyond them and they're not going to get the attention or they're not going to get the accolades or people are going to focus on you and not them as a parent, you know, they'll move the standard. Well, you know, I did this. Well, I got my master's degree. Well, you know, my life experience is beyond master's degree. I would have like a double doctor's degree, you know, uh, because of, of the things I went through, you know, education in a college setting, you know, doesn't naturally, you know, uh, doesn't necessarily, um, you know, uh, have a student reach their potential when I can, you know, put in my work and show that I qualify for an honorary doctorate because of what I've done, but you don't do anything, but boss me around you know so they 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 never want you to achieve or they assume they don't want you to get beyond where they are and most of you guys are beyond where those narcissistic parents were right so now here you are as an adult getting in a relationship and let's say you've been in a relationship or you've come out of a relationship with a narcissist the one thing that you know for certain is that you were never good enough no matter what you've done, the goalposts will always move. The standards was always raised. No matter what you did in the beginning, you were idealized and you were perfect. Everything that you did was so wonderful. And now the very, just as, as much as they idealize you and put you on that pedestal, they hate you equally just that much. And that's amazing because like, how can somebody hate me just that much that just had me up on a pedestal? And so, but to them, they they know that you're good enough. They know that you're good. They know that you're smart. They know that you have potential. They know because you're competing with them. Why would you compete against your loved one? Why I would want to encourage you, right? So if you're in a relationship, I'm going to encourage you because when you do well, you know, to help me do well, it encourages me to do well. You know, I'm going to push you so you can push me, you know, and that's that. And, but to a narcissist is, if you achieve this or if you start doing and you may have been doing it long before, but now it's, you, oh, okay, so you, you have a, a double doctor's degree and, or you, oh, so you have a, a 15 bedroom house. So, you know, it just means you have more bills. They can never be happy for your achievements. They never can compliment you on your achievements. There's always a, but, you know, um, that's wonderful, but, you know, oh, that's great, but, oh, these are my dreams. Oh, that's wonderful, but, you know, you'll probably never see them in your lifetime. Well, where'd you get that from? You know, what, what makes you think I don't have the potential to do it? They know you have the potential to do it, but you're never going to win when it comes to them, their hatred and their jealousy towards you. So you will never be good enough. Some of you are leaving out of relationships and they're in new relationship or you found out about their, you know, new supply. Your main question is, is 
you know, what does he or she have that, that, that I don't have? I did this, I did that, I did this, you know, I helped, you know, you build a business, I raised your children, I was a perfect housewife, I was, okay, so I wasn't perfect, or, you know, I'm, I'm a human, and okay, I made some mistakes, or, you know, I was a good husband, and, and I don't understand, you know, I did everything for her, and I did everything for my kids, and, and she always had a new car, and a beautiful home, and, you know, she didn't have to work, or he didn't have to work, or, you know, whatever the case may be in the relationship, you know, but you are questioning yourself, you come out the relationship as if you're the one with the problem. Now, I'm not saying people don't have problems. We all have problems. There's no such, such thing as a perfect relationship, as I said before. Now, there's someone that's perfect for you, and you are perfect for them, and it's like the yin and yang. You know, you, you, you just a, a, a match, you know, not a match made from hell, because that's what it was with the narcissist, but a match. You know, you, you guys complement each other. You're not just alike. That's like two magnets pushing against each other that are just alike, but opposites attract. And so the problem is, is that you have been in a relationship with this narcissist where you just never feel good enough. Some of you have become OCD. You know, some of you guys have just, it's just, it's, it's terrible. You question yourself. What have I done? What didn't I do? Wasn't I pretty enough? Wasn't I smart enough? Okay, maybe I didn't have a college degree like he did or she did. Or maybe I, you know, I'm not a fitness master. I'm not a marathon runner. I'm not a, the, a cabinet member in the Senate or the, you know, or maybe I'm not a television personality. I'm not a, you know, but, but you're unique all by yourself. You don't ever have to be like anybody else. You have to remember that the narcissist is seeking new supply. Any kind of supply that they can find, that they can sink their teeth into, is the supply that they're going to take that's going to give them copious amounts of fuel. Once they've depleted you and you don't serve their purpose anymore, then they go and move on to their next source of supply, whatever that is. And nine times out of ten, it could be someone totally opposite than you. That does not make you less than who you are. That does not make you a valuable, a not valuable, a invaluable, a not valuable or have no value as a person. You are unique all by yourself. You're not going to be like somebody else. Where you're talented and gifted at may not be where they're talented and gifted at. But it doesn't matter. You'll never ever be good enough to a narcissist. A narcissist is not even good enough for themselves. Think about it. They don't have their own personality. They don't have their own, you know, self sense of worth. Their only worth that they ever get is when they can hurt you or they can move people emotionally and cause them to react, hurt them, and then take them from hurt and make it seem like they're their hero, they're their God. That's the only time in their mind they feel empowered when they can control, abuse, and make people react. And so you have qualities good qualities that that narcissist hates. Now, once they discard you and you get back on your feet, you learn, you recover, you do better than what they lied or, or pre, pre, uh, uh, was it perceived that, you know, in their little arrogant mind that you'll never be anybody, you'll never go anywhere, you'll never, you know, they, they all this garbage, where'd you get this from? Where are the facts of what you're saying? And then you succeed and you become better than what you were before. That's the cautionary ear. That's that, that, that yellow caution sign area because when they see you, that means you're fueled back up. Now that you're fueled back up, be prepared, they may hoover. You know, they may hoover because they want that fuel. Oh, you done got back on your feet. Oh, I got to prove that you are still the same person. I still have control over you. I still can cause you to react. I still have power over your emotions. The person that has control over you is the person that can cause you to react and act out of character. When you stay cool and calm, no matter how much you want to just choke them until their lips turn blue, you know, run them over with a car, as long as you learn to have temperance and self-control, you're in control. You have to let them go. When I say let them go, let go of the control. What's the word I'm looking for? Not let go of the control. You have to take your control back. By taking back your control, that doesn't mean you come up fighting like, like you have a sword and you're going to swing and cut people. When it comes to taking your control back, it's stop reacting and reacting to their uh, attacks against you. For some of you, I know it's hard. But you go home in your privacy and you cry, you shout, you hit your pillows, don't tear your house up. That's your house. You know, but you don't let them see you react. You're never going to be good enough for a narcissist. No one is good enough for a narcissist. You can't fill a, a bottomless pit.
you, you'll be, you'll just run around in a circle, make yourself tired. You can never fill a bottomless pit. It doesn't matter who they get with. They are never satisfied and no one is ever good enough for them. So hopefully this has helped you give you some encouragement for the weekend. It is Friday. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing. Those that have not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hopefully this has encouraged you. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, which is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, which is my book Facebook page. Hit the like. Uh, and I also have a professional Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Yes, I am a licensed mental health counselor, a certified uh, clinical trauma professional, a narcissist recovery specialist, specialist, a published uh, uh, writer, author, and a public speaker. And so I thank you guys so much for your support. Make sure you order my book. It's on Amazon and it's on Barnes and Noble. You can get the ebook or you can get the um, Kindle version or you can get the soft cover or the hardback. Um, it's at a very nominal fee um, and it is Unmasking the illusion of perfection is real and true stories of people that have suffered at the hands of uh, an, and the life of a narcissist. You got, you know, children and how they were handled by their parents and what they were said and how they were manipulated and how they grew up and the things that they were thinking. They are real thoughts, real, even even to a point where they had, they wanted to kill the narcissist, you know, sad to say, but uh, that they were pushed to that point. Um, you have business women that were in there, you know, people that have, uh, that have uh, a reputation within the community, well-known, well, it's not well-known people that you know, uh, because the names have been changed for the purpose of privacy. Uh, but you will find yourself in that book. It is a Christian book, so I provide a uh, Christian encouragement, biblical Christian encouragement. However, for those of you that are not Christians, take the principles out of the book because you will find yourself in that book somewhere. Share the book. Make sure the teenagers get it because teenagers are going through this. A lot of teenagers going through this, and as long as they see it and you introduce it to them early, they know what they're looking at. They know what they're reading. They understand the behavior. Knowledge and awareness is powerful to fight against this epidemic narcissist abuse, you know. So once again, thank you guys so much, and make sure you go to my mentors page. It is Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Make sure you subscribe to her channel. That is my mentor. That is the presiding prelay of Into His Chambers Global Ministries, uh, and that is uh, my uh, spiritual mother. Uh, and so please subscribe to her channel. She discusses narcissist abuse from a biblical perspective, a spiritual perspective. All she answer all questions. So it doesn't matter whether you're a believer or not. But if you have a question, one thing I know we have in common, whether you're a believer or not a believer, most all of you have said there's a demon behind this. You know, this can't possibly be a human being behind this. There has to be something diabolical behind it. Now, we all agree to that. And so she talks about it in depth. And so please join her um, YouTube channel, Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Also... Uh, I have also, uh, someone brought me, gave me feedback, and so um, I do have a sponsorship, and the sponsorship is with BetterHealth.com. It is a global, and I had someone subscribe to it, it is a global uh, and affordable access to, let me read it, thousands of licensed counselors worldwide. Uh, you register, you pay a nominal fee, a small fee. Um, and you have access to licensed counselors in your area for on, on in your area for um, counseling, mental health counseling, emotional counseling, and you pick and choose, um, you know, what your desires are from that counselor. You can screen your counselor, and they'll do um, online, telephone, Skype, um, and is a very low fee for those of you that really can't afford coaching, can't afford counseling, um, you know, not in my area where you can come to my office, uh, but go to betterhelp.com, and as backslash Dr. Carmen, you'll get a discount. And I will put the links under the video under YouTube. Um, go register for the site. You know, uh, when you pay that small fee, you will get counseling at a very nominal fee for, I think it's a subscription, but someone said that it is global. So it's all across the globe uh, in all the countries so that you can look for counselors in your area. And I thank you for the support. So those of you that are needing counselors in your area, because I cannot provide counseling across the state lines of Washington because I am a licensed 
mental health counselor in the state of Washington. I do provide uh, coaching services. And so if you are interested in coaching services with me, you're welcome to email me at Dr. Carmen Bryant at outlook.com. Uh, you'll find my name up on the video. So it's D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at outlook.com. And um, I will send you a package that will give you the fees for my services. Thank you guys so much for all the emails. Thank you guys so much for the comments. I love reading uh, when I have an opportunity. Let me know when there's trolls trolling the site and I will make sure that we eliminate the trolls. So once again, thank you guys so much. You guys have an awesome weekend. I will talk to you guys on Sunday. Be prepared for the alert. I come on eight between eight and nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time in the US. So that's West Coast time, California's time. Uh, and I will be on live to answer questions and answers. Stay tuned because I'm creating a Patreon um, account uh, for a small fee where I will provide classes, training. When I say training, I mean classes concerning narcissist abuse recovery. I give a little more to my subscribers. Uh, don't be surprised. I will probably call you. You know, if you make sure you put your address uh, and your phone number in the registration. You may get a phone call. Once I get up to a thousand uh, followers, subscribers on there, uh, I will also begin to vet people that I would like to interview. Some of you that I would interview and I will do the interview, we'll find out what program it is, whether you wanna go face to face or you just wanna be incognito and we'll just use your voice if you allow me to do that and then we will record and then I will pre-record and then I will broadcast an interview with you where you're allowing me to interview you uh, about narcissist abuse. And so I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a wonderful weekend and go be great.